found it. I didn't know it was lost. <laughs> Don't be a wise guy, huh? I'm talking about the song. What song? The song I want you to do in the school audition. Daddy, I'm not going to be in any school audition. What are you talking about? School having a big musical and Danny Williams' daughter not in it? What'll the neighbors say? Now, come on, get over here. Pay attention. I think this is a perfect song for you to do in the show. Listen to this. In my sweet little Alice blue gown When I first wandered down into town I was both proud and shy As I felt every... <laughs> Nice song. Now come over here and sing it. A lot of feeling now. It's a blue dress and you love it. And you're singing about it. Now sing. In my sweet little Alice blue gown When I first wandered down Aren't you afraid you're giving it too much? <laughs> Sweetheart, it's a blue dress. You're so happy about it. And, and, and you're singing about it. You're walking down the street, you want to tell the world about this beautiful blue dress. And you sing. And in manner of fashion, I frown. And the world seemed to smile. crack is that? Daddy, that routine is for kids. So what are you, Sophie Tucker? <laughs> I tell you, it'll be great for you. You'll make a big Hi. hit with it. Hello, sweetheart. Hi, Mom. Well, what a lovely gown. You must give me the name of your dressmaker. <laughs> I'm having enough trouble with your daughter. Uh, not as much trouble as I've had with your son. At least I helped your shop, didn't I? Ooh, some help. I spent half my time looking for him. I couldn't help it. I got lost. You got lost in a supermarket? Yeah, between the breakfast food and the pickled pig's feet. <laughs> Never mind, honey. Take the groceries in the kitchen. The cookies, too? Yeah, but remember, uh, no samples. Not even one? Not even one. Gee, I'm losing so much weight, I'll have to wear suspenders to hold my pants up. <laughs> March, skinny. <laughs> what an appetite that yeah. kid got. He's the only boy in the world who eats between bites. Poor underwear. <laughs> Honey, wait a minute. I want you to hear this song. I want Terry to do this for the school audition. Oh, well, as uh, soon as I hang up my coat here. Daddy, do I have to? Well, if you're going to learn this routine, kid, it's a song and dance routine. You better get started. Daddy, who said I wanted to learn a song and dance routine? You started the whole thing. What are you talking about? I thought you'd be dying to get into the school musical. I was just trying to help you out. Well, I'm not dying to get in the school musical. As a matter of fact, I, I have no interest in show business whatsoever. I only went along with the singing and dancing business to make you happy. But, Terry, I, I always thought you wanted to go on the stage. Sure, when you were a baby, we couldn't even get a diaper on you. You were always busy taking bows. <laughs> well, I was young then. I didn't know what I was doing. But now, well, I, I've decided I don't want to fritter away my life on a frivolous activity like prancing around on some stage when there are far, far more important things to be done. <laughs> perhaps, perhaps maybe I'll, I'll become a famous dress designer. Or maybe a nurse for the Red Cross. Or maybe a famous social worker. I want to give something to the world. Something worthwhile. Something for which humanity will thank me. Gee, what a ham. <laughs> for your information, show business is very, very important to humanity. 
Oh, when I was in the third grade, the teacher picked me out to play Abraham Lincoln. Sure. Now, you were the only one in the third grade with a beard. <laughs> All right, so I didn't go to college. Father, I am 14 years old, and I'm capable of making my own decisions. Well, I'm a few times 14 years old, and I'm capable of taking you over my knee and wailing some sense into you. And my decision is that I am your father, and you'll do as I say. Well, how utterly mid-Victorian! <laughs> You know something? This younger generation scares me. It scares me, too, and I'm a member. <laughs> But the days grow short when you reach September. And the autumn weather turns the leaves to gray. One hasn't got time for the way. Precious days I'll spend with you. Why? We'll do that uh, second number in the first show tonight. Wally. Get out the millionaire routine, will you? Hey, buddy, sing now on a collie baby. <coughs> oh, no. Daddy! Frank! Wally! It's Frank Martin! How do you like that now by the Ohio? I got the cutest little old mile. There ain't nobody half as pretty as she, as sweet as can be. And jumping jeepers creepers, she's crazy for me. And what an old mile. It's good to see you. How'd you beat the rap? What rap? What rap? Murder, aren't you? The guy that killed Vaudeville? Oh. <laughs> I, I talked to William and sent us to the hardware business. The hardware business? Yeah, and doing great, too, Danny. No kidding. Yeah. How's everything in Cleveland? Just fine. Say, so you remember my son, Bob, don't you, Dan? Bobby? Yeah. Well, for goodness sake. Say, oh, you've Mr. grown Williams. up. How are you, son? This is my fiancé, Ellen King. Your fiancé? Well, you have grown up. <laughs> Last time I saw you, you were interested in marbles. <laughs> How do you do, Mr. Williams? Hello, my dear. Happy to know you. Any fiancé of Bob's is a shock to me. <laughs> this time I saw you, Lab, let me see. You brought him backstage. I was playing... Uh, the East Side Theater in Detroit, wasn't it? Detroit, that was it? I remember it very well. What a show you put on. Gee, I thought you were the greatest performer I'd ever seen. Oh, well, what did he know? He was just a kid at the time. <laughs> yeah, but he was smart for his age. Yeah. <laughs> Sit down, folks. Mm -hmm. Gee, Margaret would love to see you, Frank. How about all of you having dinner with us tomorrow? Fine. Well, fine, eh? We'd love that. Good. What are you doing in town? Well, Danny, I'm here to realize my fondest ambition. Huh? I want to put my boy in show business. Bobby? Not the bug. You want to go in the show business, huh? Well, I... Sure I, he wants to go in the show business. 
Well, have you done anything? I well, he's been playing local television stations and calling shows, things like that. Mm -hmm. But now he's ready for the big time. And, Danny, I want you to hear him. We shouldn't bother Mr. Williams like this. What? What Ellen means, Dad, is that Mr. Williams is a busy man. He hasn't got time to listen to an amateur like me. Oh, don't be ridiculous. Danny wants to listen to you, don't you, Danny? Well, I'd like to. See, I told you to help us out. <laughs> Danny, wait a minute. He's sensational. Hmm. Not a bum like his old man was. He's really got it. You know, it's... Uh... You know, he's got something that I always wanted and never had, Dan. I was gonna say that it's peculiar how kids change their minds. When I first talked to you, Bobby, you were talking about being a scientist or a doctor or something. Oh, well, I was all gonna... kids go through that stage. He did, too. But when I saw how much talent he had, I made up my mind he wasn't gonna waste it. Ever since then, he's listened to me. You're lucky. Your kids listen to you. The only time my kids listen to me is when I say, here's your allowance. Oh. <laughs> my daughter, Terry, any time I talk show business to her, she just won't listen. She must have a mind of her own. Yeah, isn't it awful? <laughs> I like to hear you sometime, Bob. Yeah, hey, how, 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 right now. <laughs> no, not now, Dad. Well, Some other time. Never no time like the present, I always say, but, right, Dan? But, Dad, I didn't bring any arrangements. I know you me. didn't, but I did. I brought the new material I bought you. You see, boy? What would you do without me, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Will you pass that out to the boys? And look, keep it in tempo. And, and don't drown the boy out. Let, let him take the lead and, and, and you follow him because he knows what he wants to do, right? Okay, boy. Come on, Bob. Get up there and belt one out. Now, do it just like I taught you, here. Come on now, boy. Here you go. Wait till you hear this. They say there's a pot of gold at the end of the rainbow. Well, I don't know if it's true or not. I never seem to be around when there's a rainbow. I haven't even got a pot. <laughs> so what? So what if the skies are dark and gray and cloudy? So what if there's not a penny in my purse? I'm not gonna cry, cause I know by and by gonna be worse. So what if I've got a pocket full of nothing? So what if my days are sorrowful and sad? I'll just better smile, cause in a little while, things are gonna be twice as bad. I'll just forget my care and sorrow, keep my eye on our tomorrow, cause the weatherman said, cloudier and cold. I'm gonna cut out all my pining, cause there is a silver lining on the ring they sold me and told me as gold. So what if your taxes are getting higher? So what if the shirt on your back is wearing thin? You don't have to care, cause friend, you paid your share. And next year, they're gonna take your skin. Let all of your cares and worries be forgotten. Though all of your plans last year just went to pot. Here is bound to turn out rotten. So what? So what? Is everybody miserable? <laughs> And you know Bobby? Yes, hello, Bob. And this is his fiance, Miss King, Ellen King. How do you hello, do, Miss Haven't you could come in? Take your sweater? I'll take it, honey. There. Is Dad here yet? Well, he was here, Bob, but he had to run over to Jesse's to uh, pick up some papers. I'm glad he's not here. It'll give us a chance to ask your advice. Look, Ellen, it's not their problem. Well, that doesn't mean we can't ask them about this it. This is neither the time nor the place. Every time we bring up the subject, it's neither the time nor the place. Well, well, they're going to make a great married couple. They fight real good. <laughs> Do you believe that a parent should live a son's life for him and never give him a chance to think for himself? Well, I never really thought about it too it's much. It's not like yes. that at all. He's not trying to live my life for He's me. He's not, huh? Mrs. Williams, what do you think of a parent that would force his son into a career he didn't want to follow? Well, if he didn't want to follow, Who's I should Who's forcing me? You talk like he's holding a gun to my head. Well, he's the same thing. He's using your love and loyalty to him as, as a weapon to make you do what he wants you to do. He's the kindest, sweetest guy in the world, and you make him sound like a monster. Well, he's ruining your life. 
Mrs. Williams, yes. don't you think that if a man wants to be a doctor more than anything else in the whole world, that's what he should be no matter what his parents may think? Well, I've always said that a doctor is Don't a you think a girl should mind her own business and let a fellow solve his own problems? Well, it isn't just your problem. It's my problem, too. If you run away from this, you'll be running the rest of your life. I can't let you do that because I love you. That's how it comes to be my problem. I got your book Saturday and Sunday in Al's basement. <laughs> oh. I mean, Al's blue room. <laughs> Danny, really, haven't you been listening? I don't know what they're doing. I don't see the problem at all. Kid wants to be a doctor, why don't he just go up to his old man and tell him? Go up to his old man and tell him just like that. It's obvious why he can't just go up and tell him. Any fool can see. Why don't you? Hey. <laughs> because I've let it go too far. I should have spoken to him long ago. You mean you, you've never mentioned it to him? Well, I've hinted around at it, but I never had the nerve to make an issue of it. Ever since Mom died, Dad's lived his whole life based on the idea that I'm going into show business. I can't hurt him now. I really came to New York to try to apply for medical school. Mr. Williams, did your father want you to be an entertainer? You make a good lawyer, you know that? <laughs> no, my father wanted me to be a rug salesman. Yeah, but you did what you thought was best for you. Well, it's because I had no talent for selling rugs. I mean, <laughs> how could he even sell a rug to my mother? And I know she turned me down three times. <laughs> did you want to sell rugs? I mean, even if you'd been good at it. That must be your dad now. What are we gonna do? What's there to do? Just be honest. Tell him. But how? Look, now, now, now don't worry. I'll, I'll break it to your father gently. <laughs> you don't have anything to worry about. I'm on your side. Me too. Well, that gives us a little to worry about. <laughs> <laughs> what kind of a crack is that? Let's face it, dear. You're not the most diplomatic person in the world. Why, because you didn't go to college? I'll be diplomatic. I'll handle it. Don't worry about it. Hi. Hi man. Come on in, kid. Good. Did you see Jesse down at the office? Yeah, sure did. Fine. Let me take your hat. Sit down. Look okay, for a cigarette? Oh, yeah. Dinner will be ready in a minute. Sure. You feeling all right? Ooh. I'm glad to hear Fine. you. Why don't you stick your nose out of your son's business? <laughs> Look, Frank, well, Frank, has it ever occurred to you to ask your son what he wants to do with his life? I know what he wants to do. He wants to go in show business. But, Frank, maybe that isn't what he wants to do. What do you mean he doesn't want to do? He's got to. He's got talent. You even said so yourself. I think that would be, be the best thing for him. Frank, we've been friends a long time. Now, you came to me for help, but I got to level with you. Show business is no good for Bobby. What do you mean? He's loaded with talent. He's got it. Yeah, he's got it. He's got it everywhere but here. Be honest with yourself, Frank. You never got far on the stage, and now you're trying to relive the career you missed. You're trying to relive it through your son. Well, it won't work. It's no good, Frank. No good at all. If he goes in the show business, you're the one who'll be counting the bowels. You're the one who'll be getting the kicks out of it, not him, because he's got no love for it. And without that love, I don't have to tell you, he doesn't stand a chance in this business. That's just your opinion. You can be wrong, you know. Let the boy talk. He's got a tongue in his head. Let him tell me he doesn't want to be in show business. Well, boy? What's there to tell? I'm going to do exactly as you want me to. I'm going into show business. I'm going to work hard and become a star and get my name up in lights. And the day it goes up in lights, that's the day it comes down. Because I'm going to quit show business. And I'm going to go to medical school. And I'm going to start leading a life that's all mine, not a hand-me-down version of yours. That's the score, Dad. So that's the score, huh? 
Let me tell you something. If you think you can become a star in show business when your heart's not in it, you're so far off base, you're not even in the right ballpark. It'd be a flop. It's one thing this family doesn't need is another flop. Go ahead. Be a doctor. I want you to. But if you're not the best damn doctor in this town, I'm gonna break every bone in your body. It's just like I said, all he had to do was go to his old man and tell him. <laughs> Thanks, Dan. <laughs> hey, Bob. I I'd still like to do those two days at Al's cellar. <laughs> well, I think dinner ought to be about ready if you'll freshen up. We're, we're having a roast leg of lamb. Danny, will you carve? Why me? There's a doctor in the house. Grab a scalpel. <laughs> <laughs> You don't have to do it because of me. You'd be no good in a school play. You haven't got your heart in it. You'd be a big flop. But, Daddy! Oh, but, Daddy me, I know what's best for you. Well, I know what's best for me, too. A girl like you, I mean, should, should be a nurse or a social worker or a fashion designer. I mean, contribute something to humanity. Why do you want to fritter away your time on show business? <laughs> fritter away my time? I'll oh, have you know that entertainment is just as important to humanity as, as food or shelter. And nobody has to apologize for dedicating their life to it. And it's, it's in my blood, just like it's in yours. And I'm going to be in show business, and don't you dare try to stop me. <laughs> what are you looking so smug about? <laughs> You know, for a fellow who's had no education, I'm absolutely brilliant. <laughs> I just made an amazing discovery. Oh? Yep. Anytime you want to get your kids to do what you want them to do, all you have to do is tell them not to do it. 